Are you ready for the next big thing? I certainly am. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, this here electronic engineering podcast brought to you by eejournal.com and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. So what exact big things are we talking about this week? Ferroelectric non-volatile memory, cargo transportation with tiny aquatic robots inspired by sea creatures, and a little bit about edge inference for AI and machine learning. So let's start off with those tiny robots, because if there's anything on Fish Fry that I love the most, it's robots. So recently, a research study at Northwestern University unveiled some pretty amazing little robots. These robots, which were inspired by sea creatures, are kind of shaped like four-legged octopi, are around a centimeter in size, and are made up of around 90% water by weight, and are obviously made to be used in aquatic environments. But what these little guys can do? They can walk at human speed, climb hills, pick up and transport cargo to a new location, and even break dance to release a particle. And they can do all of this without complex hardware, electricity, or hydraulics. They are actually activated by light, and they walk in a direction of an external rotating magnetic field. So it's the material that these robots are made of that is key here. This soft matter actually includes a specific kind of hydrogel that contains a scaffold-like structure made up of ferromagnetic nanowires that actually change shape in response to light. So when it encounters light, these molecules in the robot actually become hydrophobic, so they repel water, which causes the water molecules to escape. It's this kind of conversion that makes the robot change from the flat position to a standing position. When the light is turned off, the robot will go back to its flat position because the water molecules have now gone back to their original state. This team also found that this bending movement also helps this material respond very quickly to rotating magnetic fields, which turn on its ability to walk as fast as a human. When the rotating magnetic fields get close to these little water robots, and when they're in that bent position, their embedded skeleton can actually exert cyclic forces to activate its legs. This rotating field can also be programmed so that the robot will navigate along a predetermined path. Now, the really cool stuff happens when you put these two reactions together. When you couple its responses to the magnetic fields and light, this team of researchers at Northwestern University found that this robot can also pick up cargo and deliver it to a specific destination by rolling or walking. When it drops off said cargo at a new location, it can either invert its shape allowing the cargo to just slide off the robot, or it can do this breakdance spin type motion that's absolutely adorable to dislodge the object. So these little dudes didn't come out of thin air or thin water, as the case may be. Samuel Stupp, the head researcher on this project at Northwestern University, has been working on this type of robotic soft matter for some time. In an older study published earlier in 2020, he and his team found that this new kind of robotic material could only take one step every 12 hours. So the fact that this new material can walk as fast as a human is a huge step forward. Samuel Stupp puts his research in perspective like this. He says, Conventional robots are typically heavy machines with lots of hardware and electronics that are unable to interact safely with soft structures, including humans. We have designed soft materials with molecular intelligence to enable them to behave like robots of any size and perform useful functions in tiny spaces, underwater or underground. 
This team from Northwestern University is certain that these kinds of soft robotic materials could potentially be used to create objects for a whole lot of different applications such as new tools for environmentally important technologies, including chemical production, or as smart biomaterials for highly advanced medicine. Samuel Stupp sets the stage for future applications like this. He says, eventually we'd like to make armies of micro robots that could perform a complicated task in a coordinated way. We can tweak them molecularly to interact with one another, to imitate swarming of birds and bacteria in nature, or schools of fish in the ocean. The molecular versatility of this platform could lead to applications that have not been conceived at this point. Wow. So if you want even more information about this super cool study, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com, including the associated research paper called Fast and Programmable Locomotion of Hydrogel Metal Hybrids Under Light and Magnetic Fields, and a video of these little dudes in action. Super cool. Next up, let's bring in Stefan Mueller from FMC. Stefan and I are talking about the what, where, and how of ferroelectric non-volatile memory. Let's go. Hi, Stefan. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Nice to meet you. Okay, so we're talking about ferroelectric memory today, but for my audience who may not know, can you explain a bit about how FMC works and what sets it apart from other memory solutions today? So FMC, in the industry, from the business model perspective, we are a memory company, and you can look at us a little bit like eventually ARM. You might know ARM. They do uh, processor IP, and we do something similar in the memory space. So we provide memory technology and memory design to the semiconductor industry. And in particular, there we work with the foundries and the fabless companies. So this is uh, regarding our business model. But when it comes to the technology, we are working with a new type of non-volatile memory technology. And this is based on a new ferroelectric material, and it's called hafnium oxide. And hafnium oxide is well known in the industry. And we found a way to turn hafnium oxide from a pure insulator into a ferroelectric non-volatile memory material. I see. So, Stefan, what does this type of memory really buy me as an engineer? So as an engineer, and let's consider, for example, you are a design engineer. Nowadays, what you're faced with is if you want to bring non-volatile memory onto your system on chip, when you design the system on chip, you are stuck more or less at 40 nanometer or at 28 nanometer technology nodes because the non-volatile memories on chip they only exist up to these technology nodes. When you want to design on cutting edge technology nodes, you can go down nowadays already to seven nanometers or five nanometers. But on these advanced nodes, you only have volatile memory or cache memory available. And what we are setting out for is to bring that gap that we see in the industry to close this gap that we can bring embedded non-volatile ferroelectric memory really to advanced and cutting edge technology nodes. And that brings the designer or the engineer big advantage because you can much better deal with this memory bottleneck that we are currently facing in industry. And the memory is quite unique in that sense that it is really very fast in its write operation can go up to DRAM speeds or even cache speeds, but you get non-volatility in addition. And that is something that the industry has been looking for for quite a while. For sure. Now, what kind of applications do you see FMC playing a big part in? So the most obvious 
first application space that we are targeting at is, of course, embedded non-volatile memory, because that is where it's very suitable to uh, develop this technology with the foundries. And they are looking for new embedded non-volatile memory solutions at advanced technology nodes. But as you all might know, there is a lot of buzz currently going on of new designs, new chip that are targeted for the AI space. And the AI space, these systems on chip, they look for novel, non-volatile memory solutions that are, for example, very fast in their write operation, or they can store multiple states. And this is something that our ferroelectric memory brings to the table. So we are very excited about these developments in this second space, in this artificial intelligence space. And obviously, the third space is clearly standalone memory, because in standalone memory, everyone is looking for innovation over, let's say, classical solutions like Flash or DRAM, for example. And there we, of course, also want to play a major role in that segment. Okay, so where do you see this type of memory headed in the future? Yeah, so our goal clearly is to become the leading embedded non-volatile memory provider in the first step. And then, of course, since there is the potential of this technology to not just be suitable for the embedded case, but also for standalone, to enable completely new standalone ferroelectric memory products utilizing very advanced manufacturing technologies. And overall, if we are successful in these two goals, then this technology is setting out for changing the memory landscape as a whole, very similar to once flash memory has done it a few decades ago. Fantastic. All right. It is time for your off the cuff question. Now, Stefan, I know you're a sports enthusiast and you especially like pole vaulting. Tell me more about that. Yeah, pole vaulting has been uh, the sport of, say, my in the 20s. I did that very strong and um, I also competed on on a national level here. And it's a sport that is, I have to say, rather unusual. But it's also like the technology we are working on. It's really a a challenging sport. Uh, You have to bring together the different disciplines. You have to be fast. You have to be good in, uh, let's say, artistic uh, moves. And that's uh, quite unique. And I follow it continuously. And it shaped my life and brought me maybe to where we are today. And now I'm heading out for the next challenge, which is bringing a new memory technology to the market. I love it. (laughs) Excellent. Well, Stefan, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Doesn't it seem like to you that AI and machine learning have been the next big thing for several years now? It certainly seems that way to me. But in order for artificial intelligence or machine learning to get into mainstream edge devices, we need to enable true edge inference. In a recent episode of Chalk Talk called Cutting the AI Power Cord, Technology to Enable True Edge Inference, I sit down with Chris Artis from Maxim Integrated and talk about this very thing. We dig into the details of the Max 78,000 family of microcontrollers and check out how this new microcontroller family can help solve our AI inference challenges with low power, low latency, and a built-in neural network accelerator. And you can check out this episode of Chalk Talk by clicking the link below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com by going on over to the Chalk Talk section of eejournal.com or even heading on over to youtube.com slash eejournal. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you want to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. 
And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have that YouTube channel I just mentioned, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series hosted by yours truly. And you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, the iTunes Store, or anywhere you get your podcasts. And remember, if you want any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, I promise I will respond. Shoot me a line at amelia at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of December 18th, 2020, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.